a lot of times we want to attain wealth. A lot of times we want to go after big things in life. But in order for you to go after it, you actually have to become the person and build you to the capacity to have those things. This is I Am and More presents the journey to more, the only place for entrepreneurial minds that want to believe more, that want to become more, and that want to be more. Today, we have a special guest here, Malika Shea. She does a range of things in the business arena, but she's also a dynamic leader, dynamic coach. And I just want her to tell you a little bit more about herself and how it is that she's gotten to this place where she is today. Hello. Hi, Jamila. I am super excited to be here um, today. So I am, again, Malika Shea, and I have, I'm currently a marketing and sales coach, just as Jamila said, you know, an array of different business business things that I can, you know, that I pretty much do. Um, I got here um, through Corporate America way, right? So in Corporate America, I was in sales leadership, marketing um, leadership for over 20 something years, worked for several Fortune 500 companies, have helped them build and generate revenue over $2 billion plus. And so I decided that I wanted to leave Corporate America because I saw that there was a need um, in the space for entrepreneurs and helping entrepreneurs one-on-one -on -one, um, get there. There was a, um, a period of time where a lot of us were wanting to quit our job. You know, um, a lot of people don't stay in their jobs like how they used to many, many years ago for so long. And so I said that I want to do something where I really feel like I can make a big impact. And so that's when I started coaching um, as a profession. Let me just say this. I've been coaching for a very long time, but it, I never really took it as seriously and never really thought of it as coaching. But so now that's what I do now. I help entrepreneurs, um, small businesses with, you know, in regards to their sales, marketing and just building the foundation of their business. So here we are. Yeah. If you build right, you get to receive right. If you build wrong, it ain't going to go, you know, right. And, and I want to encourage someone because they're like, oh, they're talking about business stuff. Listen, the, the things that we talk about in business are transferable skills. Absolutely. And these are things that you need to be a great leader, whether it is in your church, whether it's in a ministry, whether it's in an organization, whether it's in a nonprofit. Even if you're in a corporate setting, these are things that you need, because if you don't know how to market yourself, you won't be able to drive influence in the way that you need to on your job. If you don't know how to sell things, you won't be able to drive um, again results in the way that you need to. And so these are skills that we all absolutely need. And so when I think about, you know, the keys to building you by building wealth, it first starts with your ability to believe, right? And so for you to get to this place where you have decided, okay, I'm going to believe God and I'm going to go out here and I'm going to do the work that he's called me to do. And I think this is so important. Because I don't think that it is a coincidence that God is ca strategically calling people off of their jobs that are like you and me, that are the hidden gems for the right foundation for your business. If he was not about to call people to entrepreneurship in the masses. And so people really need to be leaning into that right now because he's already moved, let's just say, the Moseses and the Joshua's and put them in place for you. And now what you should be doing on the other end is saying, God, am I one of these entrepreneurs? OK, God, how much money do I need to be saving? Because anything that you have to do in life requires an investment investment, whether it is an investment in time, whether it is an, an investment with money, whether it is an investment um, even with just energy and resources. Yeah. And so it's that hard work um, that really pushes us to build us while we're building wealth. And so you're here. What is really happening in your head is you're like, man, I'm going to help out all these entrepreneurs. But first, I got to start. <laughs> yeah, like, honestly, it is it is not an easy task. Right. I think the hardest thing I, I kind of view entre starting entrepreneurship, like starting 
a workout regimen, right? Um, it's, <laughs> it's hard to get to the gym, right? But once you're there, it's like, okay, you're building that momentum, but you got to talk yourself into actually getting there. Um, and then once you're there, once you're there, you're starting to learn different things, right? You're starting to learn how to, to how to use different machines and what works, what doesn't work. It's the same thing with entrepreneurship. You know what I mean? You get in there and you just start doing what you know to do. And then as you're, you know, you're going and you're weaving your way through the path, the path will become clearer and clearer on what it is, A, your purpose is, B, what it is that you need to do to be in alignment with your purpose. And he will bring, and he meaning God, will bring in the right resources and the tools to help you along that journey. And so for me, I was never really scared. Like I've invested in myself over for years, you know, in different type of uh, um, different type of businesses and that sort of thing. And so I always knew as a little girl <laughs> that I wanted to be an entrepreneur, you know, but when you get in it, it can be a little bit scary when things don't work out and you don't have the right plan. You don't have the right mentorship. You don't have the right coaching, you know, because we all need that mentorship. We all need some type of guidance. Um, and sometimes it takes multiple coaches, multiple mentors um, to get us there. But if you know that in your spirit and in your heart that this is your calling, you have to keep going. You have to keep going and you have to push through that, you know. And that is what I always coach my people. You have to push through. And also, too, one of the things that I've really been even talking to myself about is as entrepreneurs, we're going to get approached with different business ideas, right? As someone, even someone who's aspiring to be an entrepreneur, we're going to get approached with different business ideas, different things, and you're going to be getting pulled left and right, left and right, left and right here and there. And the one thing that I would say is if it's not in alignment with what you feel to do, what's in your spirit to do, that's how you make that decision that this is not right for me. Don't think about the money. Don't think about, you know, trying to hurt somebody's feelings or anything like that. If you really stick to what is in in your inside of you, inside your spirit and your core um, and what your calling is, then I, you know, you will be successful and you'll be able to, to stay on that path. But as soon as we start going left and right and, and, and doing things that's really not truly in alignment with us, that's when we, A, we're wasting time, but we're also, you know, um, not, you know, get the frustration comes, right? The frustration comes and then we wind up quitting because we're thinking, oh, it's not working. Right. So I, you, you've already outlined a key for us. And that key is if you're going to build you while you're building wealth, the first thing you have to be willing to do is one, sit down and actually go through and create some type of plan. Um, the word says our people perish without vision. Right. And so that means are you trying to embark upon something that's already dead at the start because you didn't plan? I think the second thing that she's really highlighting for is, all right, so now you got that plan. You have to then position yourself to connect with your destiny partners. That's what I like to call them, whether they're your coach, right. your mentor, yep. an accountability partner, a colleague. These people need to be driving you or be on the bus towards getting to the plan, executing the vision rather than just being a voice. OK, and telling you some stuff. And then finally, you have to be at a place where you're building up the capacity to endure and persevere. There's something in the Bible that talks about, um, you know, just the willingness to continue going after it. Y'all can read the Bible. I don't know. But <laughs> it's in there. I'm telling you, it's really in there. But that's that's a part of like you building up you. And I think the biggest uh setback that we all have is that we think things should come easy and quick and quick we live in this microwave society right now um mm -hmm. and it's unfortunate because it has subconsciously programmed us to think that things should be happening faster than what 
they really, they, you know, they, they really should be. And, and taking, doing entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship and pursuing entrepreneurship and a business ownership takes time. It takes time. Um, if you read some of the books and the stories of a lot of these billionaires and millionaires, a lot of them did not hit their stride until 60s, late 50s, 20 years after they initially started. You understand what I mean? So we have to, just what you said, understand you know, the, the, the patience and things do take time and persevere through those challenging moments. Yeah, persevere through those challenging moments. And so one of the things that you're a specialist at, right? I do the legal stuff. I'm gonna help you start up your business with the right foundation and all those different things. But I always talk to entrepreneurs that, that are just starting out. I was like, you have to realize you're the chief everything officer, but you are still held accountable for marketing. You're yeah. still held accountable for legal. You're still held accountable for accounting. You're still held accountable for finance. You're still held accountable for public relations. <laughs> the list goes on sale, right? I know, I'm not trying to scare y'all. <laughs> but it's the reality. So it's could you reality. break down what marketing really is so that people could have an understanding of it? Yeah. So I look at marketing is basically what you want to do to bring your service or products to the masses, right? In a way that speaks to them so that they that way they know exactly what you offer, how you can help them and what transformation you can bring to their lives. That's the simplest um, definition for me, you know, what, what marketing is. And of course we have, you know, you can have marketing for this. Marketing is, is a very, the big umbrella, right? You have so many different things under marketing. You have your branding, you have your ads, you have, you know, there's so much things to it, but the simplest terms, I would say, like I said, just bringing your product or your services to the masses, um, to, for them to be able to, to, you know, for you to be able to help them, but also for them to, de to determine what services those are, where you can bring value to, to their lives and help transform, you know, their lives. Yeah. And remember when I started this off, I said, y'all, this going to work for you, whether or not you're an entrepreneur, because if you are a leader, people will want to serve under your leadership when they know that you can drive results and you can bring about a transformation by letting people know what how you can transform this thing right and so even if you're not a leader if you are a just a person that works at a a, a business in any capacity you have a sphere of influence and with that sphere of influence you can market what it is that you're trying to accomplish to bring about a certain result. And so marketing really helps. It's, it's like the, the driver of results. But many times we want to get in a car and say, hey, go, move, do it. Can't. <laughs> There's no marketing behind right. it. Right. What do you think for business owners? What are the biggest misconceptions that they have around marketing? Um, That marketing is selling which there is a there is a fine line between the two um but they have they have that concept the misconception i think they also have the misconception that marketing is just ads mm. i get them, like it's just advertising oh let me just you know product shoving you know let me just tell you what my product is and that's marketing um also, too, I, I would say one of the biggest ones is, is that marketing is not as important as how much products I have. You, you, you know what I mean? So I'm going to I'm going to spend money on my inventory. I'm going to spend money on building building this this service. But I don't I don't need to invest in marketing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it reminds me of how people think that they want to go out there and make the money, but then they don't want to protect the money. And so literally this week I had to tell one of my clients, I said, you're in the insurance industry, right? 
and you know how dangerous it is to go out there without insurance. I said, having operating your business and having all of this money is great. But if it is not legally protected by you doing your trademark, by you doing your contracts, by you doing your copyrights, then you don't have insurance on your business. Like, yes, you may have in, that insurance for some other stuff, but legal protection is a whole nother beast of insurance mm -hmm. that impacts your livelihood when you are an entrepreneur. And so I hope folks are waking up. Even um, I was talking, I was on a leadership podcast a few days ago. And I was sharing with the uh, the leader there that, you know, many times people in corporate settings, they miss out on opportunities because they're giving away their intellectual property, right? They just hand it over on a platter, not understanding that if that's your million dollar idea, you need to be able to formulate it in a way where, you know, hey, X, Y, and Z is happening, or when you're negotiating your contract at the beginning, you want to make sure you know clearly what's their intellectual property, what's your intellectual property, and how to navigate that for you. Um, because if you go out there and you use it first and you protect it, you know, I, I'm giving away too much. Let me shut up. Me <laughs> That's good information. They need to hear that. Because <laughs> I'm about to, you know, have a whole long coaching session here because I just get so passionate because especially in black and brown communities, we are the ones that our businesses close down first. Like, where is this lip gloss brand? Yeah, you had a beautiful launch, but you didn't start a business. You started selling stuff. Selling stuff. Yeah. That is, and when you when you ask the question about you know what is the bis, the big misconception is to also when I talk when I said advertising and I'll elaborate a little bit on that is because what happens is a lot of new entrepreneurs think that it's just a matter of getting the product out there you know quote unquote out there but not really having a strategic plan to put it out there. You know what I mean? Um, and so what happens is it results in just what you said, you know, now months later, you're you're closing down because you haven't really had a plan or they're spending money in quote unquote advertising, but haven't really built the foundational things first to get there. So whether it's labeling your products right or whether it's, you know, just what you said, protecting your stuff. Um, those are the things that at the end of the day, you know, you want to build that foundation before you get into into the advertising piece of it. And that foundation, you know, you think about um, what is it? Three little pigs. Right. And how they that, the house and everything like that. If you if that foundation is shaky, you huff and you puff and they, it's going it's to get blown away. <laughs> yeah. No, that's so good. And, and again, it goes back to these transferable skills. You have to have the right foundation. And without that right foundation, the wealth is just going to, you know, poof and be gone if you ever get to it. Right. And then I think when you don't have the right foundation, you set yourself up in a place in a yeah. space where then you're like you're creating disappointment in your future. Yeah. And yeah. when you create disappointment in your future, you want to go and blame everyone else instead of taking a look at yourself and say, hey, what did I miss? What could I have done better? So not only do you need the right foundation, you need to be self-aware and be willing to face yourself and reflect. Absolutely. Right. And I think so many times we hear stories where people say, I wish I had known. Why don't we just go and know? What is really keeping us from knowing? Because if we knew we wouldn't have to go with the, I shoulda, coulda, wouldas, but then it depends on the mentality that you have. Back I was just to, gonna say yep. that. Go ahead and elaborate. <laughs> yeah, no, I was just gonna say it's it's all about the mentality, right? Um, and then two is where are you searching for this information? Are you actually looking for this information? But it's all about the 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 mentality, and we have to get our mind right. You know, I um I always say, and that's part of the, that's part of building a foundation. An entrepreneur's mindset versus an employee's mindset, two totally different things. You cannot think like an employee and be an entrepreneur. That will never work. Never. And so once you make that shift and you decide that you want to be an entrepreneur, trust and believe you have to start thinking 
different. You have to start thinking like an entrepreneur. You have to start thinking, you know, how, how am I going to protect my intellectual property? How am I going to protect the things that I'm building? You know what I mean? Um, and going from, you know, going from there. And that's where you have to seek out that information and know that you're going to need a coach. You're going to need some type of mentor to help you get through that. You cannot try to do this on your own. And YouTube University is great, but I do not recommend it for people who are just now starting out. I'm just going to say that. Listen, this is the place where you can say it. <laughs> I'm just going to say it. And more. <laughs> it is to get your feet wet. It is to give you some information, but there is so much misinformation out there. I was literally uh, telling someone, like, I went to a business attorney's website and they did not have their website legally protected. And I'm like, it, how 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 okay. is it that you are and, and hundreds of thousands of followers helping people in their business from a legal perspective and you miss some legal things and so but this is a guru this is somebody and we can all miss it right but we have to have discernment come on we have to have discernment as we are out here building wealth, as we are out here building ourselves, because if not, we will be taken for Boo Boo the Fool um, because someone said something that invoked emotion. And now the emotion is driving us instead of our discernment. And so, again, when we get vision in that seat that's driving us, we need to have discernment right there to know who these destiny partners are or are not. Because what you are doing determines the level and the detail of the greatness of your legacy. Absolutely. I couldn't have said that even more. Um, and when you talk about the sermon and the gurus that's out there putting us so much information out to the masses, and it's, it's very easy for us to gravitate and do business with the gurus or the people who are, you know, bigger than life and all of that stuff. But a lot of times what happens is just to your point, they don't really have all of that. Their, their marketing is to get you in, you know what I mean? And to, and it's, and a lot of times, and it's not, I'm not throwing shade on anybody, but a lot of times it's about the money. It's not about servicing people, right? It's about, it's about the money. And I made a post um, I don't know if I put it on Instagram or but a while ago and I, and I talked about the little hole in the wall. I don't mm. know if you have seen it, Jamila. And so basically what I was saying is that we have to, as new entrepreneurs, we always, we, we tend to want to do business with the restaurants, um, or the clubs, or let's just say the restaurant, right? The restaurant that has the big name attached to it. And um, everybody goes there. But when you get there, the service is horrible. The food is overpriced. The line is long. Like, it's all of that. But then you find that hole in the wall where the food is banging. The service is great. The price is on point. Right. But nobody really don't know them. They don't advertise on Instagram. They don't. It's kind of word of a mouth type of situation. But you will go to that hole in the wall each and every time because they take care of you. And so the point that I was making is, is that we have to trust that the hole in the walls got us. You mm. understand? Don't 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 be so blinded by the name and the hype and the, and all of that. You know, give the hole in the walls an opportunity to, 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 to service you because they're the ones who ultimately really truly care about you and what's how can they help you? It's not about the money and the dollars and the cents for them. Yeah, yeah, no, that's so good. And it makes me um, just think about how we are such visual people and quantitative people when we should be qualitative people. And if you are in a space where you're looking for your destiny partners, if see if when you are looking at these folks, can you hear their heart and that there is some type of love or something else pushing them also to do the work that they're saying they can do for you? 
right? It goes beyond information. It goes beyond, um, you know, a product and a service. It's really about, you know, these life partners that we are really working with because a coach has the potential to really change your life for the better, or they have the potential to make you jaded. Jaded, yep. Jaded, like, oh my gosh, I'm never doing this again. But because you entered wrong, you're like, ah, I think about so many times, like how people get a horrible boss or a horrible boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever. And now they like change their whole outlook in life. And so we have to be careful because as we're building wealth and we're building ourselves, every decision matters. Every single decision matters. And when we treat it as something that's just like, oh, well, uh, we are cheating ourselves of what could be. Yeah. Yep. And so in your work, you know, people are scared. You may be scared. How have you overcome fear? Because fear is always going to come up as we're building us and we're building wealth because it takes a risk. Yeah. I mean, for me, the why has to be way bigger than the fear itself, mm. you know? Um, and so I, I lean on, personally, if I'm feeling fearful about making a decision about something, um, I really kind of take a step back and ask, well, why, where is this fear coming from? It's rooted from something. And this probably maybe some past bad experience or whatever, whatever that is. But when I, really start to think about it. I said, okay, what is my why? Why am I why am I doing that? What is the mission? What is my end goal? And that is way bigger than the fear itself. Um and when I'm coaching, I always talk about that why. And and a lot of times I have to bring the client back to remembering what is that why? You, you know what I mean? Because I think sometimes in the midst of all of everything, we forget that. I had a guy who um, I actually did a one-on-one -on -one with him um, last month sometime. And I had been talking with him for a while and he finally decided to come on as a client. And it was a low investment for him because I genuinely wanted to help him. He was so scared to come up off and invest in himself because of past experiences. And he thought that I was going to take the money and run. And let me, um, and I, of course, I didn't know this until after our first session. During our first session, he said to me, he's like, Malika, I was so surprised that you reached out to me and scheduled our call because I just knew that you were not going to follow through. Mm. Um, and we had only scheduled two calls, but I like to over deliver because that's just what I do. And I just, you know, and I'm just super passionate about what I do. And so we have a third call scheduled, but I found it very interesting that he was able to push through that before he even started the coaching. And I asked him, I was just like, what he said is just something in my spirit and the way we connected is what made me push through that. So it wasn't nothing, you know, that one thing, it was just something that he felt in his spirit to, to tell him to push through. So, yeah, I would just say if you're feeling it, and, yeah. and also to just kind of get back to your why. No, that's that's good. Um, I, I think that I had this revelation yesterday. I feel, I feel. Yes. Y'all should be subscribing right now. Y'all should be sharing right now because it's about to be that big. I, some of us, we would really think of ourselves as gangsters and we wouldn't let people just walk out on the street, say anything to us, do anything to us. And in my world, we would say, let somebody just punk you. Right. But every day, some of us let fear punk us. Mm. Every day, some of us let limiting beliefs um, tell us all type of stuff that we would never take from somebody else. But yet we've decided to live in a place 
where we're inferior and it's all coming from our insides and our future is being held up because I say the devil is punking us through fear. Yeah. And so I want everybody tonight to be like, hold up. What are some decisions that have been on the line for me? What are some things that I've been thinking through that I have not moved on because of fear, that I have not moved on because of limiting beliefs, that I have not moved on because of imposter syndrome? And I want you to really like tell it like absolutely not, even if it means like you just pick up the phone and create a post rather than just hiding. You know, I'm I'm being bothered because it's just like, no, you can't spend the rest of your life hiding, especially if we're waiting on you. On you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I always say that we you have something to give. The world is waiting for you. God gave you that gift for a reason. He did not give it to you for you to hold to yourself. Mm hmm. Yep. And again, that goes back to the why, right? So when you really start to hone in and recognize and identify and connect with that why and know what your purpose is and really feel like, dag, you know what? This is from God. I need, I, I have a duty to get this out. I have a duty to help people. It is my duty to do X, Y, and Z. And if that is something that you need to write down in your book and affirm it every day, do what you need to do. But just remember that. And that if that don't push you through (laughs) through the fears, I don't know what else to say. No, no, no. That's that, that 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 that's spot on. That's spot on. Like we have a duty. I heard one person say we have a moral obligation. Obligation. Yeah. And it, it is biblical because at the end of the day, it's like, did you do what I tell you to do? Did you do it in the way that I told you to do it? OK, we need to have a conversation if you're not moving on it. And some people are like, OK, OK, I don't think I'm a business owner. OK, but what are you supposed to be moving on? Some of you, you just need to have your prayer call. Where the prayer call at? Some of you, you just need to start the affinity group at the job. Where's the affinity group? Right. What we're telling you is these are the things that you need to invoke to build you and to build wealth. And the reason why I'm saying that we're building wealth, because I want to speak beyond money. Absolutely. Wealth is not just money. It is you. It is your relationships. It is the funding It is the flexibility. It is the things that you are able to do because of decisions and decisions that you're making and actions that you are taking based on the beliefs that you have. And so right now, I hope someone is having a mindset shift because you it, m- we see countless people where money didn't keep them alive. Money made them, you know, not want to be here anymore. So it has to be more than money, which goes back to what is your why? Yeah. And then how can you encourage yourself to abandon your comfort zone? Yes. Yes. Be un- be okay with being uncomfortable <laughs> in, you know, in that space. Like you have to be okay with being uncomfortable. Comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yes. That, that, yes that's right. where the growth, that's where the growth lies. That's, that's where, where the growth, growth lies. lies. That's where you 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 get the best, like this. Oh, I didn't even know this was possible. Oh, I didn't. Oh, oh, oh. Like you live a life of oh. I don't know about you, but I'm ready to latch on to a life. Oh, like, oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, so. and, and, and it's funny because when we talk about like, you know, the, the fear it kind of brings me back to being a kid. Right. And so remember, you know, as a kid, we might have had a fear that there was a boogeyman. The boogeyman didn't exist. You know what I mean? Or if you start watching a, a a horror film and you think you go you go to the bathroom, you swear somebody's behind the curtain in the, in the tub, right? There's nothing there. So fear is really. I mean, it, there's there's nothing really there. It's we. What is it? The false. Um, 
what is the the acronym they say? Um, uh, false appearances, appearing real, appearing real, false right? Evidence, false yeah, evidence, appearing, appearing real. real. You know what I mean? And so you think about that, and it's just like this: it's we're, what are we scared of? What are we scared of? What yeah. are we scared of? We're, we're, we're scared of the unknown. We're scared of being uncomfortable. We're scared of being judged. I literally remember my first video on Instagram where I was sitting in a car at the Santa Monica beach where I wish I could be right now. Sorry, God just playing. I'm not, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I was like, okay, Jamila, you got to film this video. And I'd like filmed it four different times. I was like, this is the one. Okay. This is the one. And I had, I had to muster up the courage to actually put it out there. But now if I didn't take that step, we're talking about Four years later, here it is. I am. We're just like, oh yeah, let's go. We got to record. Let's go. Let's go. Mm -hmm. I had to first exercise the muscle to even be able to build the muscle, y'all. And some of y'all won't pick up the weight. And so you're in a perpetual state of waiting on what you want because you won't pick up the weight. You know yeah. what? I'm done. Like, you got anything yeah. else to say to the people? Yeah, I was. I was just trying to pull this quote because you said something about you know we're we're scared of the the we're fearful of the unknown, and it's a quote that I have. I had it on my desk, and I cannot remember, but it's something along the lines. And I'm gonna just say this, and and I'm be I'm a, I'm a close I'm a close the uh, case here, <laughs> but it's basically. Um, it's funny because we're 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 fearful of the unknowns. Um, oh geez, you know what? I, oh, darn. I just yeah, I don't even want to screw it up. I don't even want to screw it up. But it was I'm a, I'm gonna find it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even. Re I, yeah, I don't even want to screw it up. But Listen, you know, I'll make it a short on the channel. I'll make it a short. <laughs> okay. when you find it like this. This from yes. the keys to building you while building well. <laughs> Man, when I when I saw this quote, and I can't remember um, what book I read it in. It was part of part of a preface in a book. But I was just like, dang, this is good. You know, it's just like why are why are known fears oh yeah just yeah i'm i'm gonna get it i'm gonna get it okay okay moral of the story is check your fear yeah and i mean check it like you would if you had a kid and they came at you sideways how you would check that kid let's start checking fear let's check imposter syndrome let's check mm -hmm. limiting belief because if you don't check it it's 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 causing you to be in a perpetual state of like settlement right and i know i know i know i know i know look i'm getting in your face i know a lot of you all want more out of life you may be telling yourself you're comfortable but in the back of your head you had a different version for how you saw this time in your life be and i don't care whether you're 70 whether you're 20 whether you are 80 years old i want to implore you today that something more is possible if you are willing to pick up the weight and at least try. Allow yourself to have your mind be blown. Because it's happened a few times for me. Yeah. Like, did you find a quote or you got one I'm last? Look, I, yeah. Oh, I'm trying to find it. Ah. We yeah, will no, let it yeah. come back to a short, but give us one last final word or, or something. Here we go. I okay. got it. I got it. <laughs> I got it. I got it. So basically, it's why are known fears more comfortable than strange heavens? Repeat it let again. That sink in. No, why? It again. <laughs> why are known fears more comfortable than strange heavens? Mm. Let that sink in for a minute. Well, y'all, you know what it is. You know, if your strange heaven has something to do with starting that business, if that strange heaven means you already have a business and you know you don't own no trademarks, contracts, or copyrights, and you're riding dirty, waiting on the, the walls to fall, head over to I Am and More. But 
let that sink in. And I want to tell you, believe more, become more, and be more because you are and more. Take care, everyone. See you soon. Bye, guys.